Hello, and welcome to the Quiet and Strong podcast, especially for introverts. I'm your host, David Hall, and the creator of QuietAndStrong.com. This is a weekly podcast dedicated to understanding the strengths and needs of introverts. Introversion is not something to fix, but to be embraced. Normally, we'll air each episode on a Monday, so be sure to subscribe on your favorite platform. I've gotten so much better at small talk and keeping conversations going over the last several years. There's always room for improvement. And I have learned that small talk, while I may not enjoy it, it may not always be that interesting to me, it can be a gateway to deeper conversations that I want to have. I also find myself in situations when there's really no other choice than to make conversation. So once I was in a father and son type of of camping trip and I was hanging out with the other dads around the campfire I thought I was doing my fair share of the talking but someone had that sarcastic comment to me hey keep it down over there as an introvert have you met with this type of sarcastic expression such as keep it down over there it usually doesn't feel like it's a compliment it usually doesn't feel great The person saying it may not mean to do any harm, but these kinds of things can definitely be harmful. How about have you gotten, why are you so quiet? I hate that one. What's the introvert comeback for this? What do you say? No, I'm not. It usually leaves you even more speechless when someone says something like this. It definitely doesn't help. As we've talked about on the show, introversion is not shyness. As an introvert or extrovert can be shy from a lack of confidence. And confidence can come from understanding your introversion. We think and then we speak. We're not sharing everything. Extroverts are speaking in order to think. So we're hearing more from them. As introverts, we don't speak just for the sake of it. We put our thoughts together and share what we think is the most important. It can be relative. I may think I'm doing plenty of talking, but my extroverted friend may think I'm being quiet. Even worse, sometimes if we're not speaking constantly, the other person may be falsely thinking that we're not thinking at all or don't have anything to say. I promise our introverted minds are not quiet. I mean, again, we're only sharing what we think is most important and not talking just for the sake of it. Also keep in mind, introverts are not all the same. Some will speak more than others. I do know some very outspoken introverts. So being quiet is not a bad thing. The important thing is that you're forming the connections that you want and that your voice is heard. If this is not happening in the way that you want, you can change that. A lot of the change does come from self-awareness, understanding how your introversion works, and what you want, and what you need. There are many of the Quiet and Strong podcasts on these topics. If you're shy or lack confidence, you could check out episode number three called Overcoming Shyness, and gaining confidence as an introvert. Also, it helps to be prepared for conversations and meetings and presentations that are coming up. This goes a long way. And give yourself a break. You'll rarely be perfectly prepared. Or how about some other expressions that aren't very helpful? People telling you, you need to speak more or speak up. Don't be shy or he can speak, or she can speak, when you do speak. Is something wrong? You should smile more. The person may mean well by saying these things, but they're not helpful. So we need to make sure we're not saying them, but also help our fellow introverts stop these kinds of expressions. Another one that I really don't like, if you heard people tell others, especially children, hey, you just need to come out of your shell. Or we need to help that person come out of their shell. It usually is 
used in a negative way, meaning that they need to be more friendly or confident or, out, or outgoing. I've never liked this expression. If you meet someone that you think is quiet, none of these expressions are helpful. Instead, engage with them. Give them a chance to speak. Don't worry about awkward pauses or silence. Get to know them. If you tell a person, especially a child, that they're shy, if you tell them that long enough, you may be helping make that a reality. So, Amy Kroger outlined six strategies in the article called The Five Words Introverts Low to Hear. Why are you so quiet? So she has six things. Number one, she says, you can say nothing. Be confident that you're fine the way you are. You do not owe any sort of explanation. That's a good one. Be strong. Be confident. Uh, the second one, educate. I know I do a lot of this, especially in the most recent years. There are differences between introverts and extroverts. There's misconceptions. There's myths. We need to bust those myths. Introversion is not shyness, but we do need some time to think. We think before we speak. And we need to let people know those kinds of things. I know that I'm often educating when I hear people that have misunderstandings about introverts or extroverts. Uh, number three, she says you can make a joke out of it. The joke she uses, which I've heard other people say too, when someone says, why are you so quiet? You could say, why are you so loud? Have you done that one? I haven't. I think it's funny though. In my case, when I was at the campfire, I, I, I did use this one. I didn't, didn't really like my response, but I just said something like, yeah, you got to keep an eye on me. Again, not the best joke. So maybe I'll try that. Why are you so loud sometime? This is an important one, and this also goes along with educating. Then She says, ask for time to process. Sometimes in conversation, we need to think. And we might just need to, you know, while there's a little pause, say, hey, let me think about that for a second, or let me think about that for a minute, or let me get back to you. And it's all part of the educating that we are thinking. And, um, you know, it, it's being quiet, but it's, it's a way that we work. The next one, number five, she says, don't take it personally. Most people who ask this question mean no harm and often ask it out of genuine concern. They do not realize the impact it can have on us quiet people. And again, normally we're not taking these expressions very well. They seem very negative to us. And number six, she says, consider challenging yourself. We are going to be quiet. It's just a matter of, is your voice being heard? Are you taking the time that you need to think? Are you making those connections that you want to have? And if those things are true, great. You're going to be quiet from time to time. I've utilized most of these strategies at one time or another. At this point, I'm probably not going to say nothing. Because, again, that's the whole point of quietandstrong.com is to help people better understand introversion and the difference between introverts and extroverts. But I do appreciate the author's concept of being confident. And recognizing there is nothing wrong with you and you don't owe anyone an explanation. When it comes to introversion and extroversion, I'm an educator. I do need to remind myself not to take things personally, but knowing I can always improve and I, I never stop challenging myself to get better. But getting better is knowing myself, knowing some strategies that work for me. And that's the thing. You can figure out what works for you. So Kroger's list is a good outline of some strategies when you're hit with the dreaded, why are you so quiet question. Hopefully that's not happening to you too often, but it's nice to have something in mind when the situation arises. As an introvert, you may think you're talking plenty, but someone's going to find you lacking. And remember that quiet is a gift. You have an amazing mind. And you will be quiet from time to time in order to use your talents. I know I enjoy my gift of thinking and sometimes getting lost in thought. 
And we're not trying to be extroverts. And there's some important differences. We need to value and understand those differences. So David Kersey wrote, Please Understand Me Too. It describes the 16 different Myers-Briggs types. And he explores those. I really love this quote. He said, The point of this updated and expanded edition is that people are different from each other. And no amount of getting after them is going to change them. Nor is there reason to change them, because the differences are probably good. And again, that's what we need to remember. We don't need to be fixed because we're different than somebody else. We don't need to come out of our shell. But instead, we need to understand our value, our unique gifts, our strengths and needs, and be confident. And then Kiersey has another quote. And one day, perhaps, in trying to understand me, You might come to prize my differences and far from seeking to change me, might preserve and even cherish those differences. End quote. I love that quote. We don't need to fix each other. We need to understand each other. And I have a lot to say, but I'm also going to appear quiet plenty as I'm thinking. And that's my gift. I think. I think deeply. I'm good at solving problems. I'm creative. And so are you. And so sometimes I'm going to be quiet because I'm not a nonstop talker. You know, there's been a few times where I've been told in different work groups, you know, David's quiet, but when he speaks, he has some very valuable things to share. I choose to take these statements as compliments about the value and the things that I do have to share. You know, that's how I got the name Quiet and Strong from a similar experience. I was at a three-day conference on strengths. I had a great time talking about strengths for three days. I thought I was talking plenty and had a lot to share. At the end, the facilitator came up to me and was complimenting me. And she said, you are quiet and strong. When you speak, people listen. And the name stuck. And I'm sure that's the case for you. You put your thoughts together. You share the important stuff, and you share some good stuff. But there's going to be quiet in between, for sure. If you're not communicating as much as you want to, you can change that. If you lack confidence, you can gain that. If you are making those connections that you want, and your voice is being heard, be confident and be quiet and strong. Again, look out for your fellow introverts. Don't use these expressions with them. And stop others from doing the same. Let's keep educating each other on the strengths and needs of introverts and extroverts. Thank you so much for joining me today. I look forward to further connecting with you. Email me at david at quietandstrong.com. Check out the quietandstrong.com website. I'll add social media channels to the show notes. Please be sure to comment on this podcast. Send me topics and guests you'd like to see on the show. There's so many great things about being an introvert, and so we need those to be understood. Get to know your introverted strengths and needs and be strong.